know, as I said repeatedly during my election campaign, there is still much work to be done. And as you all know, just about 10 days ago, the governor told us he was going to raise our taxes mm -hmm. by about $2 billion. That's taking $2 billion out of the economy, $2 billion out of your pockets. That is a tax increase for everyone making $37,000 or more. You know, certainly not the one percentage that we hear about. Everyone's going to be hit with higher registry fees, tolls, fares, higher gas taxes. And that's just the start of it. There is a long list of tax increases coming your way. And I know it's definitely not acceptable to me. I know it's not acceptable to any of you. And I can tell you that I will fight against his tax increases, fight to stop his tax increases. And it is going to be a fight. But I am going to be on the side of the taxpayers, all of you here in this room. If, if they think that I've been um, tough about accountability in the EBT program, they haven't seen anything yet. <laughs> My taxpayers. The governor and his allies are going to tell you they don't have enough money. They need to reach into your pocket again. But the problem is that he refuses to implement the common sense reforms that will result in the savings that we need. Like Jeff was saying, we had another story today about $25 million in welfare fraud. $25 million of your dollars in welfare fraud. And that's just the tip of the iceberg here. Reforms in our public assistance program will fund paying for necessities like keeping Taunton State Hospital open here in Taunton. Yes. 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 Unfortunately, uh, you know, the governor is willing to let people defraud the system, look the other way, let them bail themselves out of jail with your money, get tattoos, get new fingernails. At the same time, he's trying to close a mental health facility that serves the most vulnerable people in our society. It is a backwards plan. My plan, however, over the next two years is to continue to fight for a fiscal accountability. And believe me, there are plenty of savings to be had in this state. Savings without reaching into your pocket for money again and again and again. As the chair of the Small Business Caucus at the State House, um, part of my plan, plan includes working in a bipartisan effort uh, to create a tax, uh, not a ta I was going to say a taxpayer bill of rights, but we need one of those too, um, a, a small business bill of rights. And, you know, what we need to grow jobs is small businesses need certainty. They need to know what's going to happen. We've had sta stagnant job growth since, like, 2000. If businesses can plan for the future, then they will start hiring, and we will get people back to work. We'll grow the tax base instead of taking money from you again and again. Another item on my agenda that Jeff talked about, very near and dear to my heart, and I know yours too, is um, the issue of child abuse. Being a protective mom is why I got involved in politics in the first place and why I ran. I know that the only way to protect children is to keep these sexual predators in jail for a long, long time, at least 25 years. Yeah. So, like Jeff said, I have filed the Child Sexual Predator Prevention Act, and it is the toughest bill filed. It's not watered down. It accomplishes what we need to accomplish to protect our kids. And, you know, people are going to tell you that I'm being too tough on these sexual predators. No, I'm not. They are being too weak on crime. And it is time to side with the victims, the innocent children, and not the criminals. And I know some of you aren't from this area, and you're, you have different representatives. I hope that you will email tonight or tomorrow your representatives and tell them to sign on to the O'Connell Child Sexual Predator Prevention Act, because tomorrow's the last day for them to sign on, and we need this. At the end of the day, everything I do, all my energy, all my efforts, all my work, it all comes back to you. It's all thanks to you, and it's all for you. 
you know that I'm committed to you, I'm committed to my community, to my district, um, to making a difference. And I've, I've been able to do that with your help. And so I'm, I'm so honored that you're being here tonight. I'm telling you, I've remained true to my promises, and I will continue to do that by listening to you, being available, holding office hours, helping my constituents, and being a fire and a leader at the State House. Every day, every day, I work to make you proud and to be effective, and I do that with, with your support. You got <laughs> I truly, truly am grateful and thank you for being here tonight. I want to thank the Sand Bar as well for their lovely accommodations and our bartender. Sand Bar is a great place to eat and drink and have fun, so I hope you'll come back again and maybe enjoy yourselves um, uh, and uh, be here to mingle with you for the rest of the night. So thank you so much for coming. I look forward to seeing you next time, and please keep in touch. Take care. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you.